uh, it is. So you pay attention to that stuff. You know, I, I've paid attention to the, everything from, you know, what Jerry Schramm has done, what Crockett has done with his track prep and, and how they're promoting that track. And, and uh, uh, Scott Schweitzer, we've got a great relationship with Scott Schweitzer at Bakersfield. We've watched how he's promoted that track. We've been involved in some of the promotions of that track. Um, I love how they prep that track. Because when you go down there for, say, the Bud Nationals, and most nights when the racing ends, when does track prep start for the next week? <laughs> right after the race stops, right? Right Absolutely. then and there. When that race stops, there is equipment coming out, and they start prepping that track for the next week after the final interview and the car rolls off. Here comes the heavy equipment. They're on the track. They take it serious down there. It's a great racetrack. It's a great – it's a tricky, tricky surface. I, that's why I love about that place. But you take those positive aspects and you apply them to what you're doing. You take the negative and remember that and you don't do it. Okay. Or you try not to do it. Um, but I think there's good in everybody that's owned a racetrack <clears throat> for the most part and how they do it. You can always learn something from these guys. And I've paid attention to those guys and, and I'm hoping that I can be decent in that category, you know, with what, what I've learned over the years. We'll find out, won't we? Um, you guys here, I appreciate everything you've done. This track's going to be good, and you guys are a big part of it. Dave's been out here. He's got probably a couple hundred hours working this track already. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be exciting. I'm pumped. Enough about our track. Big race coming up, Southern Oregon Speedway this weekend, Hall of Fame night. This is a big night at any racetrack. If you know me, you know I don't get nervous. I'm not a nervous individual. I just don't get nervous about stuff like this. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm nervous as hell going on Saturday night. I'll tell you why. Had I been at any of the other tracks I've worked, and I know the history of those tracks, and I know those drivers, and I know those names and where they come from and what they've done, it's not a problem. That's not the case coming into Southern Oregon. I'm not going to lie to anybody. I'm not going to pretend to be something I'm not. I will tell you right now, there is not a lot of history I know about this track. This makes me nervous because when you're putting people into the Hall of Fame and there's a ceremony that goes with that, that's a big deal. To honor them and do it right, it's tough. It's tough when you know them. When you don't, hmm. and you've got to learn that information right now and make it sound like you've known these guys <laughs> for 30 years and you know their history and they're your best friend <laughs> it's a lot of pressure it's a lot of pressure I'm bringing, I'm, I'm bringing one of those air horns with me <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I don't have to do it I've done this a lot these hall of fame things I've done a lot of these It's an honor for me. It's an honor. It's we, a big deal. But here's the thing. It is it is a big deal. But the people that I've put into the Hall of Fame were my heroes that I grew up watching. I know these guys. I've known them for 43 years and plus. You know, I mean, I'm only 45 years old, but I've known these guys 99% of my life. These are These were people that were my heroes growing up that have become – if you want to use the word my peers in the sport, it's not it's not hard, but you still have that sentimental, you know, and you want to honor these guys because they were my heroes before they were my friends. Understand that? Yep. When you don't have that sentimental attachment, I think it makes it hard. And that's, for me... That's going to be the hard part is because I've got, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. We're going to find out. We're going to find out how this whole thing goes. I don't even know if I'm going to be doing the, the ceremonies, if I'm going to be talking about people. I haven't been told that yet. So this is why I'm nervous. <laughs> I don't know how this whole thing is going to go we'll down. Get down there a little you bit can't early. even mentally <laughs> prep for it. So <laughs> no, uh, that's, the, well, and that's right. The mental preparation it takes on my side. Um, That's the OCD side of you. Boy, aren't you right. Got to have that all planned out. 
Spontaneous so. but sponta- spontaneity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'll shoot from the hip. I'm pretty good at it, but uh, look, I'm a bit nervous about this. So we do have the Hall of Fame night here August 17th. That's this Saturday night. We have the late models, IMCA Modifieds, IMCA Sport Mods, Mini Stocks, and Hornets. Great lineup of racing right there. That's always a good – I mean, those five divisions together – you 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 get a little bit of everything with all those divisions, and I'm excited about that. Um, <clears throat> next week, I have been looking forward to this race since it was announced, and I'm going to say in March. I saw this on the schedule when we knew we were heading for Southern Oregon, and I said, oh, man, this is the big one. We've got the biggest late model race on the West Coast, and we're going to be a part of it. Four thousand dollars to win, two thousand for second, a thousand for third. Top three spots pay well. Uh, fourth, I think, is seven fifty. Do we have the payout? We've got it here, don't worry, Gary. I'm looking right now. I want to break that down. My phone's been a little slow. It's right here. So we've got 4,000 to win, 2,000 for second, 1,000 for third, 700, 600, 500, 400, 300 for eighth, 200 from ninth on back. There's been a lot of questions because it only shows 16 spots. <clears throat> Are they only going to run 16 spots? I don't know. I think that's going to depend on car count. I think the more cars that show up, you might see 20 cars in the feature. I'd love to see 20 in the feature. That'd be awesome. You know? mm-hmm. Oh, boy. And I think you take the top 20 cars there and you put them out for four grand, let them shoot it out, rock and roll. Different format. Got the scramble for starting positions. Um, very, very different for late models. You do not, you don't see scrambles in late model racing for starting positions. They're going to set up the top four rows. Eight lap scramble to, to set the top four rows. So the top eight cars are going to how they finish in that eight lap scramble is where they're going to line up in the feature for four thousand on the line. Better bring your A game for this one, folks. Mm-hmm. Okay. <coughs> There's been some guys that have talked about the rules package. Some like it. Some don't. Some are going to push the limit, and some might get caught with some violations, depending on what tech does. you got to understand. you got to go to the Southern Oregon Speedway rules and read those, plus what's here on the flyer. Okay? That's all I'm going to say about it. We've talked about that last week. We, you know, we talked about the engine and the, and the, the tire rule. Okay? Whether you don't like it or whether you do like it doesn't really matter. There's $4,000 on the line. Everybody's going to be on the same tires. Everybody's going to have to run the same weight rule. Actually, the weight rule here is about 100 pounds lighter than what they normally run at 2250. Most of the time, it's 2350. That's going to let some guys take off some weight. For those guys that have, say, a CT525, that's going to that's gonna help those guys out. You know, the 12-inch spoiler rule. Some guys don't like it. Some guys are like, hey, right on. I can't wait to come run this deal. Um, it's going to be interesting for sure. Um, Gary, when are you going to run a Hornet? <clears throat> I don't know. He might start just right here at this track. Who knows? <laughs> he oh. might be in one Saturday night, Zach. Uh, depends my- That'd be good. Cool. If there's a car there for Gary Saturday night, I think we'll just let him jump in it and go race. I brought my helmet. Last um, we'll find out. That's kind of, you know, I'll, I'll challenge you, Zach. Bring the car. Gary, Gary can get in it. Um, Cottonwood Classic. This is the inaugural one, the, the, the very first one. Excited about this race. Excited. You know, we missed the Ironhead Nationals. Rained out last week. The month of August has been a big one for Southern Oregon Speedway. Okay. We're going to finish strong the rest of the year. Biggest shows. The biggest shows around right there at Southern Oregon Speedway. Um, after the Codwood Classic, we have a, the only two-day show of the year in two in, in three weeks, starting August 31st, third annual R. Charles Snyder Salute, IMCA Modified Sport Mods Dwarf Cars Night Number 1. Night Number 2, September 1st, is the $5,000 to win modified feature, Sport yeah. Mods Dwarf Cars Pro Stocks on Night Number 2. Awesome lineup. Awesome lineup. That is going to be – that show right there will be better than Speed Week. I will guarantee you in Speed Week, things got pretty dang exciting. Am I, uh, am I lying? Did things get exciting uh, at Speed Week? You're not dying, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's, lying, my, dying, yeah. that's my line. If I'm lying, I'm dying. <laughs> I'm still alive. I'm still alive. No lightning strikes. Let's hope not. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, season is winding down. We're getting close towards the end. We've got uh, we've got Hall of Fame night, Cottonwood Classic, two day show at the R. Charles, and then we go into two nights of championship nights. Five races left. Five races left. Um, <clears throat> car count. Car count at Southern Oregon Speedway. It's gonna be interesting to see what happens with modifieds and late models. Very interesting to see what's gonna happen with modified and late model division sport mods given um, some of the breaking news this week. It, it, I'm going to see, I'm curious to see how that affects everything around the state. What do you think? See, here's Gary going to analytical mode. This is what I do. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about it, trying to figure out what's going to happen there. Mm -hmm. and I think we all are. It's tough. It really is. It is tough. But it, I, uh, I, I know that that some will probably just say done. And I've already talked to some guys that have said that. Others that can possibly afford it, or maybe their sponsorships will allow them. And there's several guys that said they're committed to coming down, Yeah, which I'm, I'm excited to see. Got a phone call. Uh, I'll tell you right now, there's a certain driver we're going to see for the next two weeks coming down. Got the phone call yesterday. I was working on the track. Doug Elkins is coming. Oh, Doug Elkins is committed the 17th and the Cottonwood Classic. He'll be down there with his late model. He wanted to come down the 17th, get some lap times. I said, probably a good idea. Yes. I said, he goes, How, how's that track? I said, depends on what Mike McCann feels like. I said, I'll tell you right now, if you've got a heavy setup, bring it. But you better have a slick setup as well. Yep. I said, because you never know what Mike's going to do. We had a great conversation about it. I said, Doug, I said, I wish I could give you a heads up on how that track's going to be. But I'm going to be honest with you. I can't. I don't know what Mike's going to do. I think we've got enough video that somebody can go back and critique some of that stuff. Well, and that's that's another option. Go back on Moxie. Look what they're doing at the racetrack. Study that surface. See what's going on in the main events. We've put up a lot of video this year. Yeah. People can take a look at that. Um, I, I do know. And here, here, I'm going to say this. On, I'm going to say this on air, okay? Uh-oh. Because, uh -oh. because there was a particular driver who says, we're coming, the top three cars and points from – <laughs> are are coming down to Southern Oregon Speedway. I'm going to bet a dollar to a dime that driver doesn't show up. Um, that post was deleted. That post uh, was deleted. I, it, it was. It's not there anymore. So. I'll bet everybody else shows up, but I'm going to bet he doesn't. And anybody know who I'm talking about? I know exactly who you're talking about. The number 111 car? Do I want to call him out? I'll call him out. I mean, <clears throat> he's he's got his car for sale right now. So It's the second time this year that car's been for sale. I know. I know. Last time he had a fan show up, actually, at Southern Oregon and was a little bit disappointed that he backed out of that. And I, I, I can do this. I, I, I'm safe in saying that I think that my relationship with that driver is good enough. I can call him out. He'll probably laugh at it. Might make him a little upset. Yeah, but in the end, he'll laugh about it. But I think he'll laugh about it. We but I'll tell it. you right now, I don't think he's going to show up. And I'm talking about the 111 of Joey Tanner. Well, maybe he won't, but maybe Colin will. Not in a late model. Not in Joey's late model. You don't think so? No. Mm -mm. But I know we're going to see Doug Elkins. I know we're going to see several other drivers. I'd like to see Tomas Hunsger pull in from Bend, follow Darren Coffel over. Yeah. I've been personally working on Rob Maya, trying to get things set up to get Rob Maya there. I think that'd be great for for the show, the Cottonwood Classics. We know we got some heavy hitters coming from California, and we've got you know some of Oregon's best showing up. Um, that put a big, the recent breaking news, and if anybody follows dirt track racing around the Pacific Northwest knows what I'm talking about, that put a big change in what's going to happen with car count for the rest of the season, at least. Right. At least. I got to be careful how I word this stuff. Well, you know, not knowing all the information. And that's why I got to be careful what I talk about because there is information that we do know, information that I do know, that, that we've been given. Um, I'm not going to put that out there. No. Here's the thing. I haven't talked about that track all year, <clears throat> and I'm not going to start now because of the situation. That situation isn't good for racing, hasn't been good for racing, and I'm hoping that situation gets corrected. And turned around. Um, because that's what would be good for racing. You're right. We don't want to see racetracks fail. We don't None. have enough None of them, them here. Nope. 
We don't.